Hello friends, welcome back to G-Centric. So in the previous lecture we have seen the fundamental units that is SI unit system. Okay, that was our first topic in the basic concepts. So today in this lecture we will see what do we mean by charges and what do we mean by electric current. Before going into that, there was one point that was missed out in the last lecture and that is where did this network theory come from. So, this is the special case of the electromagnetic theory. Okay, there are some limitations for this uh, network theory. So, as every subject has got its own advantages and disadvantages. So, the limitations of this network theory is that it cannot be applied for all range of frequencies. It can be only applied to 1 megahertz. But whereas electromagnetic theory, it can be applied for all type of all range of frequencies. And the second limitation is that it can be applied only till lump parameters. Okay. Whereas electromagnetic theory, it can be applied for both lumped and as well as distributed. So, these terms we will be seeing in the upcoming lectures. Okay. So, as the frequency range increases, this cannot be applied even for lumped network also. So, that is the limitation of the network theory. Okay. Now, we will come to the charges. So, we all have experienced um, charges. So, whenever uh, you are wearing sweater during the winter season, then when you uh, remove it, you will see there are some sparkling lights. Okay. That is the electric charge. Okay. Uh, we will call it as the electric charges. Okay. Now, where did this charges come from? So, to know that we will go to chemistry. Now, this matter, what is this matter made up of? It is made up of the atoms. So, this is the building or fundamental, fundamental unit of the matter. So, this atom are the fundamental unit of the matter. They can either be made up of same type of element, uh, same type of atoms or different types of atom. So, now this atom, it consists of, in the atom we will find electrons, then protons and neutrons. Okay. So, these are the three particles that we find in the atom. Now, this electric, so this electron and this proton, they have got same magnitude that is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Okay, they, it is represented in coulomb. Whereas, the difference is it is negatively charged and this is positively charged. Okay, when you add this together you will get a 0. So, this 0 indicates that the atom is electrically neutral because they have got opposite signs with the same magnitude. So, we can define this charge as the most basic quantity which is responsible for electric phenomena. Okay, so, this is the charge. Now, how it is represented? It is uh, denoted by Q. Okay, I, you can denote it by small q or capital Q. Now, for this coming to the current, what is the role of the charge in current? For the electric current to flow, similarly, we can take, write it here as, so electric current. So, for this electric current to flow, we have charges. So, what type of charges are responsible? It is the electrons. So, these electrons are responsible for the electric current. Okay. Now, before going into the definition of that, we will understand how this current flows in the electric circuit. Okay. Now, if you take a circuit which has got positive terminal and a negative terminal. Now, the current flows from positive to negative. So, we have assumed this direction and this assumed direction we will call it as conventional direction. 
it is called as conventional direction which is given by benjamin franklin so we see according to this conventional direction always the current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal so and also there is one more thing positive and negative charges are opposite to the their flow is opposite to each other okay so this is the conventional direction of current so in this if there are electrons that is negatively charged electrons then when the current is flowing in this direction the flow of electrons will be in the opposite direction so even when you take two plates where one represent the positive charges and the other represent the negative charges then the flow of charges from positive to negative we will call it as flow of electric current then if the charges are flowing from neg negative to positive it, it is the flow of electrons so they are opposite to each other okay now we will define the electric current so it is defined as the rate of change of electric charges okay so this is the definition of the term current now whenever this term rate comes it means that this electric charges or the quantity is varying with respect to time so this current can be written as dq over dt so this is the formula for electric current and its unit is amperes which is represented by a this this represents the current instantaneous value of the current now if you represent this by capital i and capital q over t then this represents the absolute values okay so this is with respect to instantaneous current and when absolute values are given at that particular time you can directly substitute it so even this has got the amperes now if you want to calculate the electric charge from this formula we can write it as we can take this uh, uh, we can integrate on both the sides so you will get i is equal to dq over dt now when the integration cancels so you can get it as when the integration cancels with the differentiation so you will get q of t is equal to current into time dt okay so the limits will be from minus infinity to plus infinity where this is the formula for calculating the electric charges now when you have to calculate that one this can be this limit can be divided into two parts the first part we can divide it from minus infinity to zero and the other part we can uh, divide it from zero to positive infinity so this q of t it can be written as it can be split into two parts that is from minus infinity to zero i into dt or you can take i of t into dt plus from zero to plus infinity i of t into dt so this indicates this part from minus infinity to zero indicates that if there are any initial charge present in the system then we will put this uh, we will substitute the value in this if there is no initial charges given we will take this term as zero only this part will be we will be using for calculation okay so the best example for this is the mobile charging okay so when uh, you have low battery there will be some like one percent or two percent then you, that is the initial charge before plugging into the uh, uh, socket okay so that we will take it is here if there are no initial charge present in the uh, ba uh, battery then we will take it as zero 
So, uh, and we will substitute this with at time t is equal to exactly at time t is equal to 0. This formula will be used. So, now after uh, learning about charges, current, its definition, its formulas, we will move on to the numericals. We will see how the questions come from this type of formulas. Okay. Okay. So, in the current part, uh, whatever we have learned, there are two types of current. That is, one is we will call it as alternating current and the other one is direct current. So, the alternating current it will not vary sorry the direct current it will not vary with the time. So, this is called as DC current DC and the time axis it will remain constant. So, it is not going to vary with the time whereas, alternating current represented as AC. So, it is varying with respect to time. So, there are two types of current. One is the direct current and the alternating current. So, the first problem is determine the total charge entering a terminal between t is equal to 1 second to t is equal to 2 second passing through the terminal is i is equal to 3 t square minus t in amperes. So, we have given the time limit of the current passing in between these two time periods and we have given the amount of current and we have to find the total charge. So, our formula is, so the solution is Q of t is equal to from minus infinity to infinity i of t into dt. Oh, there are since there is they have not given any initial charge, we will not take the, uh, uh, we will take that part as 0. They have given our time limits from varying from 1 second to 2 second. So, from 1 second to 2 second, the current we will substitute in this part that is 3 t square minus t into dt. So, integrating this we will get 3 t cube over 3 minus t square over 2 and the limit is from 1 to 2. Okay, this 3 and this 3 gets cancelled. So, we have 3 cube minus t square upon 2 from limits 1 to 2. So, substituting the upper limit we will get 2 cube that is 8 then minus 2 square that is 4, 4 over 2 is again 2. So, 2 minus substituting the lower limit 1 cube minus 1 over 2. So, after solving this you will get this. It is almost 11 by 2 coulombs. So, it can be written as 5.5 coulombs. So, this is the total amount of charge present between this time period 1 to 2 seconds. Okay, so, we will see the second problem, it is the graphical type of problem. So, what they have asked us to calculate, determine the charge that pass through the element at t is equal to 1 second, 3 second and 5 second. They have given us 3 different time period. So, we need to calculate what is the amount of charge present in this time period. Okay. So, first we will start with at t is equal to 1 second. So, first one is at t is equal to 1 second. So, up to t is equal to 1 second is this part which is of the form rectangular. We can we do not need to use the formula as if it is the uh, in rectangle form we can directly substitute its area. So, area is the integration. So, basically it satisfies the formula. Okay. So, this length is from 0 to 1 that is area is L into B and this is 1 into the total height is 10. So, we will take it as 10 which comes out to be 10 coulombs. So, from between 0 to 1 second the amount of charge present is 10 coulombs. Now, coming to the second part at t is equal to 3 seconds. 
So, from up to here we need to calculate the uh, uh, amount of charge present here. So, we have calculated already this part from 0 to 1. So, directly we can add it, we can take 10 plus now this area, area of this rectangular that is part 1, then area of this one part 2 and this area of this third rectangle that is area 3. Now, the area of formula is area of triangle is half into base into height plus this again L into B plus L into B. Now, we know 10 plus what is the base of this one? It is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1 and height is 10 minus 5 that is 5. So, we will take as half into 1 into 5 plus area of this is 1 and this is 5. So, 1 into 5 plus again 1 into 5. So, we will it comes out to be 10 plus 2.5 plus 5 plus 5 is 10. So, which is equal to 22.5 coulombs. So, this is the amount of charge present from 0 to 3 seconds. Now, up to 5 seconds we need to calculate from 3 to 5 seconds ok. So, third part is at t is equal to 5 seconds. Now, till we know the amount of charge present till 0 to 3 seconds. So, that is 22.5 coulomb then plus area of the rectangle that is 1 into 5. So, this area area number 4 and the area of the rectangle which will be area number 5 that is half into base into height. Height is 5. So, again we will get 2.5 that is 25 plus 5 which comes out to be 30 coulombs. So, the amount of charge present from 0 to 5 second is 30 coulombs. Okay, so, these are some type of the problems. One is the graphical representation and the one is the statement problem. So, in the next lecture, we will start from EMF. We will start, we will see what do we mean by EMF and potential difference. Okay, thank you.